long polling. So let's get started. Let's first understand what is polling. Polling is a technique used in computer networking and communication to periodically check for new data or events from a source. So basically it's a data retrieval technique and the pattern that is used to check or retrieve new data will define whether it is a short polling or long polling. So what is short polling? Short polling is a technique to retrieve data from the server by making periodic requests at regular intervals. So ideally the client will ask the server or send the request to the server for the new data and the server will return the data as a part of the response immediately if the new data is available or else it will immediately return the empty response. So now since we talked about the regular intervals, so how long the intervals should be? Well, it depends on the use case. For example, if the polling interval is 5 seconds, then the client will make the request to the server for a new data every 5 seconds. And this request response pattern continues in a repeating manner. So in action, it will look something like this. Let's say we have a client and the server. The client will make a request to the server for new data and the server will send the response immediately with whatever data it has and the connection will be closed. Now let's say the fixed interval is of 5 seconds. So the client will wait for 5 seconds and after that the client will make another request to the server for new data. Now let's say the server does not have any data to return. So in that case, the server will return the empty response and this pattern continues. So ideally the short polling can be considered stateless because the client makes a request to the server at regular intervals without maintaining any state between requests. So here each request is independent and it does not rely on the previous requests response. Okay. So now as a next step, let's have a look at the pros and cons of using short polling. So we will start with the pros. Short polling is easy to implement as compared to long polling and web sockets. Near real time updates. Short polling can provide near real time updates which will allow clients to receive new data frequently. Short polling is compatible across a wide range of devices and platforms. Now moving on to the cons. Network load. Short polling can generate a high volume of requests to the server with low frequency intervals which will result in high network traffic and server load. Another is inefficient. It is inefficient in situations where the server has little or no new data for the client and basically it will result in unnecessary request and network traffic. Connection overload. Each time the request is made to the server, the TCP connection is established. Hence, three-way handshake and teardown with each request. And this will result in connection overload and wastage of resources. Apart from these cons, short polling may not be suitable for high volume data or real time applications that require very frequent updates because the server may get overwhelmed with the high number of requests. Hence, it has the limited scalability. Now let's see when to use short polling. So short polling is suitable for application that do not generate high volume of data such as email clients. Near real time updates. Application where the real time updates are not critical, but at the same time, the client or users need to receive the updates quickly, but not in real time, such as uh, maybe online calendars. Another is low latency requirements. Short polling can be used for application where frequent updates are required, but the real time updates are not critical. So these are few of the pointers about when to use short polling. Now coming to the applications. So the first one is cricket score refresh. In India, there is a very popular site for checking cricket scores in text format, which is ESPN Crick Info. And it seems to use short polling for live updates of the score and commentary. How do I know this? So if you do inspect element and monitor the network tab, then you should be able to see the request response pattern for score and commentary updates. Another is checking server status. So let's say when you spin up an EC2 instance in AWS, you see the status which shows pending when the instance is booting up. 
So for example, how does this status of the instance gets updated to running? One way to check the status is to use short polling, where the client will send a periodic request to the server asking for the status. So if the status is changed, then the server will return the updated information or else it will return the same response that it is still in pending state. Again, you can monitor this behavior using the network tab via inspect element. Another application that I want to highlight is SQS. So by default, SQS supports short polling when the queue is being polled for a new message. However, you can also configure the SQS queue to support long polling. So in the next video, I will be covering the SQS short polling versus non polling with the hands-on implementation. So these are a few of the pros and cons and when to use short polling and its application. Now moving on to the long polling. What is long polling? Long polling is again a technique to retrieve data from the server by maintaining a persistent connection between the client and the server. In long polling, the client will ask the question or send the request to the server for new data. The server will send the response if the new data is available and the connection will be closed. And then the client will make a new request for new data again. Now, in case if the server does not have the new data, then it will hold or keep the connection open until the server has the answer or new data to send to the client. If the server does not have the data or so to say new data to respond to the client for a certain duration, then the connection will be timed out. And again, the client has to send a new request to the server for new data. Connection time out needs to be configured on the server side. So basically a similar pattern of request response continues. In action, long polling will look something like this. The client will make a request to the server and the server will return the new data as a part of the response and the connection will be closed. Again, the client will make a new request to the server for the new data. And this time, let's say server does not have a data to respond with. So the server will hold the connection or keep the connection open until the new data is available. Now let's say after five seconds, the new data is available. And as soon as the new data is available, it will send that to the client as a part of the response and the connection will be closed. Again, the client will make a new request to the server and this time the server does not have any new data for let's say 10 seconds and we have configured the timeout of 10 seconds. So in this scenario, the connection will be timed out and the client has to make the new request again and this pattern continues. So in general, the long polling can be considered stateful because the persistent connection is made between the client and server. This means that the client keeps an open connection with the server and waits for the server to send updates when they become available. Now let's go through the pros and cons of long polling. So again, we'll start with the pros, less network load. Long polling helps to address the shortcoming of short polling by reducing the number of requests needed to check for new data, which will result in lower network traffic and server load. Low latency. Long polling can provide near real time updates uh, with low latency as the server can push new data to the client as soon as it becomes available. Efficient. Long polling can be more efficient than short polling in situations where there is a little or no new data as the server can hold the connection open until new data becomes available. As a part of the cons, it's complex to implement. Long polling is implemented on the server side and can be more complex to implement than short polling because it requires the server to maintain open connections and manage timeouts. It has some network limitations. Long polling may not work well in networks with high latency or unreliable connection because in that scenario, the timeouts and connection drop can occur frequently. Another one is server load. Long polling can still generate a significant load on the server, especially in situations with high traffic or very frequent updates. Now moving on to when to use long polling. High data volumes. It is suitable for applications that generate a high volume of data or updates such as financial applications. 
real time updates are critical long polling can be used in applications that require real time updates such as chat applications or online games low latency requirements long polling can provide near real time updates with low latency making it suitable for applications that require frequent updates and low latency now moving on to the applications the first one is chat application it can be used within chat applications where users need to receive real time updates on messages and conversations however websocket is also used for such applications checking server status as a part of the short polling we discussed about ec2 instance status checks and how short polling can be leveraged to check the server status so basically the status check can also be implemented via long polling where the client will send the request to the server and the server will hold the request if the status is not changed and as soon as the status changes it will return the updated information again uh, i want to highlight that long polling needs to be implemented on the server side finally sqs sqs can be configured to support long polling when the sqs queue does not have any new data available frequently now apart from this long polling can also be used in online gaming finance application collaborative applications and so on so how should we decide when to use short polling versus long polling ultimately it all boils down to the requirements and the use case that we have in hand so guys that was all for this video and i hope you found this video helpful until that time if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time